What's up guys? Let's do an Air Force Condor review 2023. Is it still worth the money? What are some of the benefits? They've changed some things since 2004 and made made some nice nice improvements, but at the same time there's still some things. So in this video I want to talk about the 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 advantages to the system what it still has today. Some of the the things that aren't so great that kind of date it and then yeah, uh, some of the things that are just decent which kind of cross platform you can look at and then some missed opportunities. I think there's a ton of missed opportunities with this rifle, but we'll get into that. So let's get into some of the strengths. The power of the Condors is kind of unrivaled. I think you can probably get up to 125 foot-pounds of energy in a 25 cal, which it, you can really make it smoke um, and really do a, a bunch of hard hitting. The system itself is very durable. It's all metal and the parts in it are extremely cheap uh, to replace for the most part. There's no regulator in the rifle. It's all metal and the parts just seem to be very durable. There's, it, it just doesn't seem to leak and it doesn't some, seem to break. I think there's maybe four or five O-rings in the entire system. And I feel just with a couple wrenches or a couple Allen wrenches, you can probably disassemble this entire thing. So price-wise, this is $863 stock that doesn't come with, with this stock or the moderator which I guess they used to be very affordable. You can probably pick up the Talon at, or Condor SS's for right around 800 and then the Talon P's for like six, 700 and the Talon SS's. But know that it's fairly affordable. It seems expensive, I know, but looking at the other price tag of other rifles in the $2,000 range, yeah, and, and that. So it's, it's, it's decent price. I think it used to have better value back in 2004, 2003, you know, eight-ish than it does now because things have progressed, which we'll talk about the negative aspects of this rifle. Overall, it is a single shot. Some people are going to hate or love this. The thing I like about this rifle is the fact that you can put slugs in this rifle, or really heavy pellets directly in. You don't have to worry about mags failing. You can put larger slugs like in the inch and a half or so and kind of jam them in there where it's just not possible with a day state or an FX or something that's it's kind of mag driven or those bull pups that have a kind of a slender, a narrow gap that you really can't start putting in there. So 25 cal, you could probably put in 65. I think I have put in 65 grain slugs and, and more in this system. Overall, it is a modular system, meaning you could swap out the barrel, replace the barrel eh, five or 10 minutes and you're good to go. Go from 177 to 22 or 25 cal. They have different powers and they also have an adjustable top hat system, which you'll kind of see in half, which have different openings that they've come out with just recently, allowing you to change the power system up. So you can go from a 177 at 12 foot pounds of energy to something like this that's gonna produce over 100 foot pounds of energy. All in one, just that, that top hat screws off and you pop on another one and you're good to go. Overall, they say the accuracy is roughly one inch at 75 yards. I found that to be probably more with the tuned rifle than out of the box. So I have to kind of give the, the Air Force Condor, even with today with all the little minor upgrades, kind of just decent. I think there's better buys for the money for since it's a, a Marauder, Benjamin Marauder for $599. There's a lot of other rifles that seem to be more confined in its power and its air usage that you can probably get a little bit better, but this rifle offers so much more flexibility. I think people are kind of looking the other way and they kind of plan to upgrade this rifle once they get it. And talking about upgrades, the price to performance at $863, this rifle is pretty expensive. I think it used to be $699. And back in 2005, 2006, yeah, that was a pretty good price in comparison. There was a lot less competition and the accuracy at that time for what people were, were getting was, was really decent. Now, bragging about one inch groups at 60, 70, you know, 70, 75 yards isn't really, you know, all that impressive. But, you know, I, I think there's some enhancement they definitely can make. So price to performance ratio is just okay. Before I thought it was a steal. Shot count, um, roughly anywhere. Here is the deal with so much of the availability of changes. You could probably get a couple hundred shots out of this in 177 if you narrow it down to uh, 12 foot pounds. And then if you want to go up to 120 foot pounds or more, you're probably going to get 20 shots. It depends all that. And that's all really easy to do with the springs and the adjustments and that, that piece. 
to be able to kind of go vastly different spectrums of power and performance with air usage. Overall, though, I would have to say that this system does not it is not very efficient with air usage. It's 490 cc bottle, and with this inline inline system, again, it's unregulated, so you don't really have the regulator to worry about. But it will start to guzzle air if you don't have it tuned properly. Let's talk about the negative aspects or some things that does pour, and this is going to be one of those a different type of review, simply from the fact that you don't get this kind of information from most air gun reviews and performance. You could kind of say if you look at the, the air usage and the accuracy out of the box, it doesn't do well in compared to the competition nowadays. And I'd have to kind of agree a little bit with that. The 12 millimeter dovetails is really dated, guys. As you can see, I have some adapters going to the Picatinny stuff, uh, the stock on here. It just everyone complains about the design of this and how it's, it's just not as functional. You're going to need a lot of adapters if you're going to try to put on some some different kind of equipment, but they're not super pricey, but it is a little bit of a performance hit when you're actually, do, you know, a little bit of a, a hit on financially, I should say, when you're kind of doing that kind of stuff. Some of the things you'll notice, there is a stock on this rifle, and that's because I'm doing some testing. This out of the box probably shot an inch and a half uh, at 55 yards, and, and I've been reworking the barrel, cleaning that, working with some different top hats and some adjustments, and the stock in itself, I'm not sure, but they talk about the gun flex, how it flexes and it can affect the accuracy. And so in, in that, I wanted to kind of remove that aspect. They also talk about the gun being a little bit hold sensitive, or if it can't because it's so high, the, the scope is up here, it can affect the accuracy. So you kind of have to have things all bolted down in there. And that's one of the things I'm going to kind of run a diary on this rifle show you everything that I've done to it, you know, up to this point or that, and kind of take you on different shoots to see how well we can get this thing to perform. So three things left, modifications. This thing is loud out of the box, so you need a sound moderator of some sort. And that's not, it's not cheap, guys. This is well over $100 just for the sound moderator. The, the stock is 300 and some dollars. Modifications to get the performance, the really things you want can can add up, and we'll see if it's worth it. That's that's again kind of coming back to the project. But lastly, you guys, as I mentioned, it is single shot, and that that's that's obviously going to be a deal breaker. I can't tell you how many times you see on forums people wanting a multi shot. Somehow, some magazine put into this to to make it work, but we're pretty much stuck with what we have. All right, guys, let's get into. The missed opportunities i think this is the biggest part of, of this review is the missed opportunities and you just kind of have to shake your head going air force come on man make it happen so this this platform has been out close to 20 years if not 20 years and it's changed very little and the industry has moved on to slugs and power and this and this used to be you know 60 foot pounds of energy now it's 120 foot pounds of energy or more but there's a thing that their barrel is a, a Lothar Walter, you know, barrel is choked. And there's a lot of guys that would love to be, have a little bit more slug friendly. Now there's a bunch of slugs out there that I'm using in this rifle that mixed results. Some people say you can't run slugs out of this rifle. Some people say you can, there's a bunch of slugs out there. There's Nielsen and Griffin, and I'm trying all of them just to see if it can make it happen. But just for a few hundred extra dollars, um, I think that Air Force could take it out, put in a different barrel. Their parts are generally fairly cheap. So a 24 inch barrel, 25 cal range, like 225 bucks. I think they could replace that with a 300, $300 barrel, uh, something that's like a CZ with with no choke something that's very slug friendly and create a slugger addition now fx has done this with the pantera they talk about this but yeah the pantera can get 120 foot pounds or so so can this right out of the box so for instance if you're going to spend two thousand dollars on some of these slugs like the day states and the fx's and the crickets and that that the the big ones you could do it for i don't know a thousand twelve hundred bucks Put in a few extra parts, stiffen up the frame, put on and get a moderator built in, um, some top hat adjustments. These are all the things that I've been doing, but also a barrel that's friendly 
to slugs and then market it that way is, is the Condor slug shooter. I think people are going to jump all over it. It's an affordable, something that will sling them out there. You might not get that really, really good accuracy that, you know, the bigger, more expensive rifles. But if you can get 75, 85% of that, maybe put in a regulator because there's a lot of guys putting in extended regulators. Make it happen. You could probably do it for another two or $300. And if it's tested and you got it down, people will buy it. There, there's just no doubt because it has the power. People like Air Force guns for the power. It's the accuracy and then some of the slugs. And I would suggest that Air Force actually start making their own slugs, start making their ammo. I, I don't understand that part of how they can't be hand in hand. Like this whole integrated system with FX and their slugs, their hybrid slugs and their barrels is genius. That is a very good way for you to go because you can kind of control the process. You can really make things work for you and you can make money. Those, those FX slugs are not cheap. Air Force is, is missing out on that. And lastly, this kind of goes with the, with the modifications. Air Force doesn't have a middle ground. Now they brought raw rapid air weapons and that was a custom builder where you had to wait like nine months to buy a rifle from, from a, a custom builder and, and they purchased his brain and, and everything he's doing and he's still overseeing that. And it's great that Air Force doesn't mess with them too much because the guy's quality is outstanding. But the middle ground for Air Force is almost non-existent. They used to have five, $600 rifles and now they have 2,000 plus uh, dollar rifles for the, ra the RAWs. And, that, and then they got some Texans in the middle, but they're, they're 25 cal, 177. There's nothing in the middle that really works for them. They're, people are wanting a little extra, little extra umph, a little extra quality, a little extra accuracy and everything to kind of jump in that. And, and especially with the simplicity of the system. I can't tell you enough, guys. The simplicity of the system is genius. It's just you need to kind of up the ball a little bit on, on your quality. And I think you can kind of still make a run of it. So there you guys have it. You guys got questions, comments, concerns right down below. I know this is a little bit different of a, a review. You probably haven't seen this type of review critiquing uh, rifles this harshly. But this is what I do. Kind of try to pick out all the negative things and, and let you guys know what you're getting into. But if you like it, hit that live, like, subscribe button. And hopefully I'll see you next week.